May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we have gathered here as people who have loved Dinesh so much. And as people shaken by the tragic death of our beloved Dinesh, struggling to come to terms with the reality of all that has happened. While we mourn his death on one hand, we on the other hand would like to celebrate his life, his deep, silent piety and reverence to God. I've seen Dinesh in and out of the Church of St. Michael's, Polvata, walking with his son, kneeling before God's throne of grace, praying with outstretched hands. We give thanks to God and celebrate his life of love and warm affection, his life of witness throughout these many years God loaned him to us. Let me remind that our Lord Jesus, our Savior, our Master, was also killed brutally on the cross at the age of 33. And you could imagine what Mary, the mother of our Lord, would have gone through. And I imagine her saying what she said at her conception. Behold, I am the Lord's handmaid. Let it happen to me according to your word. In other words, she said, Father, whatever you permit to come my way, I'm willing to receive it and go through it. And we can just imagine what the family would be going through right now, having experienced this tragic death of Dinesh. So we stand here in solidarity with him, with the family, assuring his parents Chandra, Lilani and Roshni, assuring his dear wife Tani and children, Ahalia, Akash, and Adam, of God's peace and comfort and consolation to envelop them at this time of grief. We also share the pain of Dinesh's siblings, Prakash and Sumi, Manjula and James, Reverend Ramesh and Reverend Abigail, Nirosh and Shannon, and all his lovely nieces and nephews who are heartbroken, praying for God's peace to rule their hearts at this time. Four 
focusing on the Bible passage that was read today from the letter to the Romans. Permit me to say this. If ever Paul the Apostle rode in a triumphant chariot on this side of heaven, so to say, it was here. He challenges all the enemies of the saints to do their worst, to do their worst, and see what happens. Firstly, Apostle Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Friends, the enemies may seem to be strong. Enemies may seem to be many in number. What can they do for those who live their life in Christ? We are about to celebrate Christmas. When the Father loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, so that whoever may believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came into this world to become God Emmanuel, God with us and God within us. That is the great gift that God has given us. And when God is with us and within us as God Emmanuel, they can do anything to our bodies. But nothing can touch the soul that dwells with Christ, intertwined in a beautiful divine relationship. You may say Dinesh was brutally killed. They have only destroyed his mortal body. They are subject to decay. In a few hours time his body will be laid to rest. Dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. But Dinesh can never be killed. Dinesh continues to live with Jesus. And he will be interceding for his wife and children and parents and siblings. Why? Because he owned Christ. And his life was intertwined with Jesus. And so, Apostle Paul asks the question, if God is for us, who can be against us? Tribulation, distress, persecution, in nakedness, peril, sword, death, murder. Nothing can kill us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us and continue to love us. Secondly, woe to those 
to take lives that belong to God. Why do I say this? Life never belongs to us. Life belongs to our Creator. And you and I have no right to take the life of another. In the first murder, we see Cain killing Abel. And God confronts him and asks Cain, where is your brother? Killing is one thing. Having killed, having an attitude of not being bothered about your act of murder is much more severe than the act of killing. And God said, how dare you say this? When his blood is crying from the ground calling for justice. And God says, you are cursed for this attitude. We, God doesn't curse us, but bring upon us a curse by our own disobedience of murder, of killing somebody else. And you know what the curse is? You shall be a restless wanderer. The guilt of killing someone will never leave you. It will torment you day and night. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he prayed a prayer. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. In other words, he said, Father, I feel sorry for these people for they do not know the consequences of what they are doing. God will hold us responsible for taking life that belongs to him and him alone. Retribution will certainly follow them. Is to cry the same cry Jesus cried. Father, may they come to realize what they are doing or what they have done is not right. We can only cry for mercy on such people of cruelty as Jesus cried on the cross. Thirdly, Apostle Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Why? Because Jesus came, he gave his life for you and for me on the cross, forgiving us for all that we have done amiss. He died, he rose again. And if the story ended with that, there would not be Christianity today.
he ascended unto heaven, opened the gates of heaven for you and for me. Therefore, no one can snatch Dinesh out of the hand of the God who loves his life. It is that which made Apostle Paul to say, For I am sure neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no things present, no things to come. No powers, no height, no death. Mind you the word death. No anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I always want to live my life on three principles based on what God did through Jesus for each of us. The first principle is I'm born to live. Live the life that God has planned out for me from the time my little heart started beating in my mother's womb. From the time the, the little heart of Dinesh started beating in the womb of Mrs. Shafter. God has planned his life for Dinesh. And the Lord wanted him to live that life. And therefore we say, We are born to live. The second principle is we live to die and not live to live. There are people who build castles in the air and they don't think of the shortness and the uncertainty of this earthly life. Next minute may not be mine. We are not here to live our lives to live forever and ever. We live to die. Praise God, because death is never a punishment. Death is a gateway through which the Lord takes us home. The Lord was talking to his disciples about his departure in John 14. And the moment he said about his departure, their faces fell. Why they were not prepared for that? And Jesus immediately said, let not your hearts be troubled when I talk to you about that. He recognized it as a spiritual disease. If you are frightened of death, if you are troubled by death, then you need to do something about it. And then Jesus says, I have the medicine. What is the medicine? Believe me and believe my father. If you believe me and believe my father, you will not be troubled. Because for a Christian, life continues. Born to live, live to die. And the third, we die to live eternally. We die to live eternally. And that's exactly has happened to Dinesh. I always believe in my heart, sicknesses, tragedies, Murders can never kill us. It involves Jesus coming and taking us home. But he can use any of those things, any of those means of entry. 
Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And once I have prepared a place for you, I will come and take you. I will come and take you. So that you will be where I am. As I went into the ICU, not the ICU, the, the room where they were giving immediate treatment to Dinesh and prayed over him and anointed him. My prayer was, Lord, I don't know what you have decided about him. But let me tell you something. We want to have him a little more with us. We want to enjoy his life, his love, his smile. But we cannot fight against your plan for him. Having shared our desire, I also said, let your will be done. Whatever you think that is best for Dinesh, may it come to pass. We are like Mary Magdalene, weeping at the tomb of Jesus. When she realized that it was Jesus, she came running to embrace him. And the Lord said, do not touch me, Mary. It's true that I have been at your place. I have come there. I have dined. I have supped. But I need to go where I belong to first. I still not ascended to my father. It is true that Dinesh belonged to us the family, but all these relationships are temporary. But someone holds us permanently, and that is the Father. The Father holds our lives together. And Jesus gives her an alternate. Instead of weeping, Go and tell my disciples that I'm going to your father and my father. I'm going to your God and my God. I imagine hearing Dine saying, Appa, Amma, Tani, my siblings, my children, go and tell the world that I'm going to your God and my God. I'm going to your father and my father. In other words, rejoice in home going. And we celebrate that life that God gave to us. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.